All right, hey there, Twitch. We're going to be getting into some games here, just jumping in right away. Later on, we'll probably be uh, doing some Civilization VI again, but uh, we're probably going to take a little bit of a break between then and there. So hopefully some people start trickling in. Don't have anyone in here right now, so we're sort of just talking to ourselves a little bit. But um, let's go ahead and get into Persistent again. I need to continue leveling up some of these fleets here. Kind of wonder which ones I want to level, though. Um... Why don't we go ahead and start leveling up uh, Chaos again? I think that that uh, they're a fun fleet. I think that there's a lot of uh, fun that you can have with a Chaos fleet, and they're pretty good in, in the way that they work right now compared to other factions. Just because I, I don't know why they're actually quite good. Their specific favor bonuses are quite strong compared to a lot of people. Gives them a unique flair and playstyle that I don't think other people have. It's kind of interesting. All right, so we're going to try and hit 7 here, then uh, once we do, or if we do, we'll switch off and go for another faction here. Um, probably going to level up the uh, the Imperial Navy after this. Um, I've been doing some stuff with Lunars lately. They're not a great ship. Uh, they're, they're, in fact, pretty pretty atrociously bad, but um, it's interesting trying them out, trying to use them as a type of close-range ship that I think uh, can do okay. I was using them a bit in ranked as well, but... Um, actually, I can't remember if this is the run where I was using the Lunars. They're such a bad ship. Like, the mixed broadsides are, are terrible, and the fact that they've got relatively low overall damage per second is terrible, but... And, I don't know. They've got the ramming prow and they've got torpedoes. I guess that's all you really typically need out of Imperial Navy ships, but... Torpedoes are just not that reliable in this game, and the uh, rams are just not that reliable in this game either, so... All right... Hopefully we'll be able to get a match. I don't know what the community's like. I haven't played this in a little while, so if the community's a little bit too dead, that might be a problem. It's also a problem when you're playing this and, like, no one plays it anymore because then people will start being like, oh, yeah, no, that game, I should try playing it a little bit, and then, like, they'll get into it and there's no one playing it, so they'll be like, oh, well, I guess I'll stop playing it. All right, we got uh, some people in the chat now, it looks like. Three people. I think two of them are technically me, though, but... Uh, that's just because obviously I've got an eye on what's going on in the uh, stream. So hopefully we'll get a few people in here. Hopefully we'll get uh, some people, more importantly, in the friggin' game. Uh, if it gets too bad, I might actually try the single player campaign a little bit. Because like, it's been so long and I was so crappy when I initially started playing it that uh, it might be interesting going on a campaign run. But who knows, maybe it won't be. Alright. Well, we got 4,410. I might as well start uh, getting some upgrades for these other ships here, like our our little uh, transports here. It's kind of a interesting look for the transports. I don't remember them having these chains and stuff like that. I wonder if that's a newer addition. Might just because I never really closely scrutinized the transport ships. But anyway, wonder what we probably want for these little guys here. Um, probably extra boosts. Would be a good idea for these little guys here. And maybe... Hmm. Could go with additional Void Shield uh, on these things. That might be a good idea. Alright, we'll go with that. The other ships here, like the Iconoclast can actually be pretty useful if you're up against Eldar. So we probably actually do want to put an upgrade on these guys. Um, line of Sight. Oh, alright. Well, hopefully we're not against Eldar because then... You know, I'll, I'll really regret not having upgraded Iconoclast. Although they're not actually that good against Eldar because they get blown up so easily by them. They're just way too weak against uh, bombers and stuff like that. Okay. And we are up against... It's a 400-point cruiser clash, so lower-level admiral at any rate. Up against um, Imperial Navy. All right. I'm wondering if we can get away with not taking our uh, sticks here. Like, we don't need it really for counter ordnance against the Imperial Navy. And, like, we've got very few ships with this uh, composition regardless, so we might be better off just going for uh, our damage-based ships here. But we could also replace this with, like... Oh, no, we can't even take a Hellbringer Mark I. Hmm, all right. So I guess this is what we're going to go with. It's a very sort of short-range fleet. Try and out-brawl uh, the Imperials with our Chaos Fleet. I think it'll actually work out pretty well. 
Imperial Navy ships rely very heavily on things like Brace for Impact and uh, stuff like that to out damage per second slaughters, so um, it's going to be a pretty okay chance that we'll be able to beat them this way. Alright, so what we're going to do is hopefully swing very wide around them and hopefully be relatively okay on uh, just attacking them. Now, the auger disruptors are going to be really unimportant in this fight, so we're not going to worry too much about that. But, uh, we want our Hellbringer basically to be sort of far off to the side of them. So once we get a bit closer, we'll turn so that our slaughters are closer and then our Hellbringer with the uh, lances is a little bit further away. And we're going to try and get around the outside of the Imperial Navy fleets. The um, single side broadside damage from the slaughter is higher than the uh, single side broadside damage from the Imperial ships. But the Imperial ships, if they get surrounded, have more damage per second on all sides. So you want to be firing from one side if you're up against the Imperial Navy. Um, it also gives us the ability to like focus fire down one of their ships on the edge, whereas we'll be fo getting focus fired on our ship here. But it just means that we'll hopefully be able to like brace for impact, use auger disruptors. Alright, so my opponent seems to be using stealth for some reason, but this is problematic for me actually because if we get detected, um, then I can't use the auger disruptor obviously, but I can't actually see where his ships are to use that auger disruptor, so it's gonna be basically blind luck, of, luck on this. Nope. I don't actually remember what direction he was actually headed, to be honest. Alright, there he is. Did he just move all the ships in the cloud and I wasn't paying attention? I probably did. If he probably did, I mean. Alright. Sort of looking at three different things at once here, so it's kind of all over the place. Alright. He might have a Widowmaker, in which case the auger disruptors are useless anyway. I'm going to save that actually for if we uh, get near the cloud and he is uh, trying to use that for line of sight blocking. Fortunately my ships are pretty fast here so we should be able to get up to these escorts. Oh yeah, he's got line of sight to my ships anyway. Oops, okay, well that's bad, but... Boarding is actually usually a good way to get rid of these guys, but I got pretty unlucky with the boarding action there. What are these anyway? Swords? Strange. Well, if he runs that little sword there into the rest of his fleet, then we're going to be pretty well off. But looks like he's going to explode, so... This guy's targeting. And with my opponent not able to use his special orders, he's actually really at a disadvantage here. All right. I'm braced for impact here, so this is not actually going to be as bad as it looks like it could be. Alright. Let's go ahead and start uh, targeting systems here. Just a little bit. There's one of their escorts. Alright, and that should be that ship down. Focus. Oh, wow, that ship is lucky. It's going to explode anyway from the fire, but... Yeah, there we go. We lost our special orders just from duration, but that's fine. Um, it does mean that he could do some pretty damaging rams here, but... Just show us something to kill. There we go. Executing high energy turn. Cruising speed set. 
just do a quick dodge there, make sure that we're not getting hit by any of that stuff. Don't want to be taking any unnecessary damage, even like this late into the game. Alright, there we go. Easy enough. Just had to avoid the rams when our uh, Brace for Impact was down. Don't mind getting rammed the whole one we're on Brace for Impact, and I don't know why he was using Lock on Target. It's a bad choice um, when you're using front firing weapons like those Dauntlesses. Um, and he had his, like, cruiser set to front-firing behavior as well, so that was kind of, uh, probably a newbie mistake, I don't really know. But it was pretty much, I guess, going for rams, and I was sort of dodging them, so maybe that was what was going on. Okay, we actually hit seven from that. Okay, interesting. I didn't think we'd hit seven from that. So we'll rearrange our fleet just a little bit, but then we'll jump out and play a little bit of the Imperial Navy. All right. Level 7 gets us another battlecruiser slot. And again, like, I could go try for something else. Like, I could try for something new here. The Acheron is just... I don't like the Acheron. Its damage per second is pretty mediocre in terms of those lances. The heavy missile pod turrets are no better than the heavy missile pod turrets on lower tier ships. Like, if we were to go to the slaughter here, it's the exact same as the turrets on the slaughter. So... Why, do, why wouldn't I just take the Slaughter instead of the Akron to some extent? Well, it's got the Lance turrets. That's another two damage per second from Lances. That's pretty okay. Um, it's got the Pure Lance data instead of the uh, Mixed, so it's got longer range by a long shot. Um, but that's about it. It's a little bit more hull integrity, but slower. Um, I, I just don't like it as a ship. It's not particularly good to me. It does have 200 shields, so it is more durable. It does have 800 hull integrity. It does have um, just... It's a little bit more bulky in some respects, but it's not really what we're looking for here. Hades here, again, it's got like the lance turrets, so that's okay. It's got like this heavy prow lance. That's only two damage per second as well, um, since it's only got the one. And for that, it's missing those really good missile pods and stuff like that. So it's just an inferior ship in my opinion. It does focus on the macro batteries, and this means it's got split weapon datas. Um, the Chaos Macro Batteries are also kind of not great. It looks like we're running some ads right now, but I think that it should be fine once we get back out of this. So I really do think that the Sticks is the only real option here. The big difference, I guess, is cost in terms of points, but it's got those super heavy missile pod turrets, which are really good. It's missing one of the other ones, but it has got like the Lance turret, I guess, which is kind of... Oh no, it does have both super heavy macro turret over there. So it does have those. Those are excellent, excellent weapons. It's got the uh, lance turret there, so it's all, all turreted weapons, so it can be facing any which direction it wants to. Um, so I think the sticks is really just the option that you want to go for. So let's go ahead and pop in some abilities here. We're going to go with the same sort of setup here since we want this as a replacement if the first one gets whacked. So, um, oh, damn it. Oh, well, whatever. Um, I kind of have that like compulsion that I want to have these in the same order, but... We'll live without until we've got just tons and tons of luck over renown. Like, we've got quite a bit of extra extra renown, but not enough that I feel like it's really worth it. Ooh, we can upgrade our idolators. Uh, that feels pretty good here. Um, so, there should be one that lets these guys take out shields faster, and that's what we're going to pick with this. Just because those lances uh, don't really do a whole lot of damage if you don't do that. And uh, for this, let's go ahead and get... The only time we're ever going to take this is against Eldar. Uh, targeting Matrix can be pretty good here. These guys only have 6,000 range though, so if you want to do that, you need the upgraded range as well, which is still also worth it against Eldar to some extent. But uh, we do probably want to take the Advanced Cogitator Linkages, and we do probably want to also take the uh, Improved Augur Array. It'll let us see further. Let us see those Eldar far, far away. Uh, and uh, against Eldar, you kind of want this, but you kind of don't. And you kind of want this, but you kind of don't. It's kind of... It, it's. Um, we'll go with the turrets in this case, but... I don't think that'll help that much, honestly. Mostly what you're going to find is that these guys get one shot by the uh, carriers. So if he's flying away from you, you just lose idolators and then you lose another iconoclast, and then you lose another iconoclast, and then you lose another iconoclast. And it's kind of not ideal. Anyway, let's go ahead and hit back to the uh, main menu. Switch up faction. And hopefully, uh, I can't even remember really what my Imperial Navy fleet is actually. Ever since I had to like redo this, all my fleets got completely screwed over. All right. So 
So I've actually got like a couple of followers on Twitch now, and I've actually got more views than I thought I would have had. Um, I think people just sort of were watching it afterwards. Oh, this is a Dominator um, Space Marine mix. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty interesting. But let's go ahead and hit uh, ready here. So, yeah, I'm not actually sure which of the videos that people were coming in to see, if they were coming to see Balfoy Gothic or if they were coming to see uh, Civilization. I'm guessing a lot of people poke their heads in to see me playing Civilization just because it's a new game and they sort of want to get as broad a view of that as possible. But maybe they were coming in here to see Battlefleet Gothic. I know that that's the one that people were watching live last time. Um, it'd be nice if, like, uh, you know, you would follow me on Twitter. Go ahead and do that. That's where I announce when I'm going to be streaming, um, and that's when I announce when I'm going to be uh, on here. Usually about an hour, half an hour in advance. I could get a more regular schedule, but for now you can assume that I'm going to be streaming on Saturdays. Um, I'm probably going to start impromptu streaming on some other days, and I'm going to figure out when that is, but I'm new to this, so I'm trying to figure out how this all works, how this all runs, trying to get it as good as possible, but bit new, bit of a noob, don't don't hate me for that. Um, yeah, so our Dauntless Fleet here, it's coming along very, very slowly. The thing is, like, you need lots of good upgrades for Imperial ships to really shine. That's what makes them super, super durable, and they can uh, just start tanking through ridiculous amounts of stuff once they get uh, up there but um in the current state of things like with my fleet right now since they're so under uh, upgraded i'm not going to have an easy time uh going broadside to broadside even with certain ships and it's going to be a real pain leveling myself up dominator spam for the uh, nova cannons is really good against some people but like if you end up against orcs or something like that then it's just as useless if you end up against uh imperial navy it's useless even against Tau, I found they've stacked so many shields, typically, that it doesn't really do that much damage to Tau. Um, a lot of them, though, you can sort of get them to break uh, out their repair drones pretty quickly, and all their sort of, like, special orders, so it could be useful for that purpose. The thing is, we're going to need to get the uh, arm piercing macros at some point in time. It's just so far into the build that uh, I don't know that when, when a good time to get those would be. I think part of the reason that like uh, armor-piercing macros is less taken now is that people take, uh, because of the nerf to it, it does minus 25% armor now rather than um, giving you a flat 25 armor. Uh, it used to just change your armor to 25 no matter what it was, but the thing is most ships don't have 75 armor anywhere. Um, the only ones that really do are the Imperial Navy ships in the front, so just don't shoot at them in the front if you possible. Uh, the Tau ships in the front, and Space Marine ships all around. So yeah, it's a big nerf against the Space Marines, but... Space Marines kind of needed that. Uh, they kind of sucked a little bit too much. They would suck too much if they j just got shredded through by armor-piercing macros. That would just not be fair. But, um, yeah, th I think that they're still actually really worthwhile because most of the time you're going to be firing at 50 armor um, rather than the front weapons of, like, orcs or anything like that. You're not really going to be firing at that that often because the weapons from front mounts are usually relatively weak. Uh, some orcs can get themselves so that they've got really good front weapons, um... Dauntlesses are good front weapons, but, um, you know, Chaos doesn't have front weapons and their armor is always 50. Uh, Tau front weapons are sure, but you, you sort of ram into them anyway and then just sort of fire at them as you go past on their sides. So it doesn't really matter that they're really good uh, front weapons and front armor. Um, you're probably going to be just ramming them and going to the side shots. So, All right, we're just not getting a match today, but... Give it just a couple more minutes here, rambling on uselessly while we go about it. Uh, we got over 1,900 uh, points here, so we could get a favor on this guy. We could go ahead and just uh, pop uh, Adept Stardis on this guy as well. It's only 400. The Adeptus Astartes are prepared to continue. All right, and I guess we can also upgrade our transports. All right, we got our match. We got our match. Good. Okay, it's a 300-point cruiser clash. That's uh, going to be a little bit awkward. We're up against uh, Chaos here. So, hmm. Could be a good idea for me to bring a Mars and then just bring a Dauntless to sort of come along with it. I think that might be a good way of going about this. The Mars is going to give us a little bit of carrier uh, capability. The uh, Nova Cannon might intimidate my opponent a little bit. The, the ability to use carriers in general is quite strong, especially against longer range ships. Um, I think we've got Micro Warp on it. Um, I might be wrong. 
The Dauntless can just sort of like either chase ships or it can kind of keep things off of the side of my uh, carrier there. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and deploy like that. Eh. All right, so I don't have micro orb jump, but I do have the um, the stasis bomb, which is pretty good as well. Use this guy as a little support ship with the shield transfer. One of the things that we're probably going to have to try and do is disable engines, just because otherwise it's chaos is going to kite around us all day long. Let's go ahead and make sure that we got that uh, fighter screen there. So let's see, have we got uh, fighters here, or are we seeing lances? I think that lances are starting to become more common for a lot of chaos fleets. Um, it's just not necessarily because I think that they're better, but I think it's because more people see them as being um, viable in the sort of Tau meta where the Tau crush everybody in terms of ordnance. There's nothing you can really do to match them. All right, so I thought I heard a recon beacon being fired, but was that my imagination? We're seeing two escorts here that are using torpedoes, actually. It's a little bit interesting. Ooh, and we're seeing a, t yes, seeing a mine right there. Alright, so... Oh yeah, there was a recon course, beacon. I hate, I hate the fact that they're so hard to see sometimes. Ship ready. Ironic as that is. Alright, we're heading towards a gas cloud anyway though, so I don't have to actually worry about that. Especially because I don't seem to see very many... Uh, I don't really see any carriers, which are the things I'm really afraid of as far as that goes. Alright, slip through there. Changing course. Let's just uh, boost our way in there. Oh, I do actually see a carrier. At your command. Engines hot. Alright, we'll get a shot at this guy, see if we can cause him to pop a couple of his abilities. Ah, that is a really crappy shot there. I think we're going to nick him, though. Your orders. All right. Orders received. Understood. So it looks like we're going to make it into cloud cover relatively Finish safe here. Excited. We are the Imperial Navy. All right, we want this guy to actually be front firing, but not our carrier here. Excited. Looks like he's got a... Uh, Alright, we got something with the boarding. Looks like just a fire, I think, though. Get a ram on this guy. He's not braced for impact. And he's not paying enough attention. Alright, now he's braced for impact. You here. Engines hot. If we can cripple or destroy his carrier here, actually, we'd be in a pretty good spot because if we can destroy this, his other ship has no carrier protection. And that's actually a little bit more important for us here. Actually, it looks like both these are carriers. Is that a sticks? I think that is a sticks, actually. Devastation. Interesting. Oh, he's trying to warp out. But we destroyed the engines or generator on this one, I think, so I don't think this one can escape. Oh. There we go. Alright, so his bigger ship has actually managed to flee, but this means that this ship gets, like, killed for free, and he can't really retaliate, so. Alright, get this uh, lance pointed towards these guys. Lances are much better for taking out these escorts, because they deal that guaranteed damage. Ah, oh, shields came back up. So annoying. It's probably within minimum arming distance for the torpedoes. Helm coordinates acknowledged. Yes. Like, macro fire for these guys is so slow that these escorts are really a pain for Imperial ships to take out. Well, it looks like we got another viewer. Hello. Alright. Underway. 
Oops. Damn it. All right. Well, that sucks. Yeah, crippled the destroyed enemy. Fantastic. All right. Let's swing this around and get the guns to bear. Get the uh, Nova Cannon. If you get a direct hit, it can actually potentially uh, one-shot these things, but... Got a good shot with our lances there. It's good enough. All right. Get a good boarding there. Wow, we didn't uh, destroy a little escort with that either. Hopefully he's already blown his repair. It's a little clean up here. Like, when you're down to escorts, it would be kind of nice if uh, you just automatically lost to a certain extent because it's kind of annoying to have to sort of hunt down the last little bits of escorts. Four escorts can also um, flee as well or have that morale break. Just so you don't have to go finish them off or have your opponent run them into mines or something like that, which is sort of like the honorable thing to do at the end of it. But, you know, oh well, it doesn't make a huge difference. Okay, so... Give me a holler if the sound balance is off. Uh, I gave it a quick check earlier, but uh, I'm not too sure if it's uh, stuck around at the right value, uh, values. Okay. So we're going to try and get our ships and our fleet up to level 7 here. Um, I'm not going to do that today, and we're not going to finish that today. We're just going to get as far along as we've gone. Um, for those of you who missed it, we did do a single battle with Chaos and got ourselves up to 7 with uh, Chaos. So just bringing ourselves back up to levels. All right, we're going to hit search here because it is taking us a long time, but we're also going to go here and just click around and try and figure out what else we can upgrade. Firestorms, swords are actually pretty scary if you've got uh, the arm piercing macro upgrade. So I think that that's going to be something that we're going to pick up here. You could also get them with the Voss pattern shields, which can work okay, but it's not it's not ideal. The thing is that they have got like 100 shields, so the Voss pattern is like a decent amount of extra shield, whereas the extra shield on escorts is only 50. I think that extra shield is technically still a little bit strong because this is only worth about 33-ish, probably a little bit more. Um, and like auxiliary shield capacitors could also be good for these sort of things, but I think we're going to be okay with what we've got here. So double macro here. These things have like uh, two damage per second each. Uh, so it's four damage per second from the whole ship here. That's the same as like the turret value of a Dauntless or something like that, uh, which is actually pretty high damage. It's also the same as the broadside damage on a Dauntless, so... Uh, don't really underestimate those things like sword frigates. It's also one of the few ships that you can take against Eldar uh, at the escort tier. Escorts will still get exploded constantly by bombers if uh, you're getting hit by those. So if they've gone for that strategy, then these things are a lot less useful. But having a couple of them is never really a terrible idea against Eldar. Kind of looks like they've got like good turret value along the side there, but it's just six. I think that it's one of those ones where they could have just given them eight because that's what it looks like they have. Would have been nice if that was the case there. You'd think that these would be like bad places for turrets though, because they can't really intercept things on certain arcs very well. But I don't think they actually animate that on these things. I forget how big these guys are in reference to like other sci-fi ships, but I think this thing's actually technically about the size of like the USS Enterprise, or whatever, I don't remember the designation of it, like the Star Trek Enterprise. I think it's uh, USS, but Sort of as a reference, just imagine how like big these cannons must be then. But who knows? I don't know. Star Trek ships never felt like good warships for me because that's not what they're designed for. They're de they're designed for exploration. They're designed for like peaceful missions and, and stuff like that. So it's weird that people like beat their drums and say how great they are at warships, as warships, because that's like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's really weird weird to me. And and their designs are not really, they're obviously not designed for fighting. All right, so it's going to take us a long time again to get into a, another match here. Looks like it's just looking like it's a pretty empty lobby today. Uh, but I don't know, like, community's usually been relatively quiet, so you just have days where suddenly you can get matches like every half hour or something like that, but then other days you get days where you can get a match in like two minutes or something like that, or even uh, more immediately. So we'll see. Let's try and upgrade our transports in case we get one of these uh, missions. I hate these missions. They're they're really terrible. But might as well go from. All right, so we're probably going to go with the um, auxiliary shield capacitors and the efficient plasma thrusters and the Voss pattern. Voss pattern I think synergizes really well with the auxiliary shield capacitors. It obviously also synergizes well with the additional void shield generator. But I think that the uh, Voss pattern one is going to be with the one that we take for the final one. 
but yeah, also being able to just sprint with these guys. I really wish you could take the Mozilla pattern uh, drives with these. That would just make my day as far as the Imperial transports go. Because you'd be able to so easily just run them across the map to the other side. I kind of wonder actually like where they transport stuff in these things. Like, do they store the stuff in these weird little ball segments underneath these plates? Is that what the plates are for? Is to, like, guard the uh, little ball things that have the storage? Or the storage in the plates? Like, it's hard to tell. Like, the ship's scale is such that you could fit an awful lot of crap inside these plates here. If they were hollow or, or whatever. But then, you know, a little micrometeor or something could just, like, shear through, like, all four of these if they're too thin and they're too hollow. Whereas if these uh, little ball things here are what carries the cargo like it's a lot less space because if you think about it they're only about a little bit thicker than these plates here i don't know they have a very funky design for their transport ships in warhammer 40k whereas i think that like something like this is pretty straightforward um you know you can sort of tell exactly what it's designed for i don't actually 100 percent know what these these things are for on the thr thrusters could just be for intake, but that only makes sense in atmospheric flight, so I don't really know what this thing at the front is for. It's not like they can reverse thrust or anything. Yeah, there's a lot of little bits and baubles on top of uh, these ships that I don't 100% know what are for. I think this is for sensing, uh, sensor arrays and stuff like that. I don't know. All right, got a match. Took long enough. No chat? Uh, there should be a chat, but like, it, there's only a few people in here, so uh, if you want to like talk amongst yourselves, go ahead and talk. Um, but it's just, you know, I'm a new streamer. I'm not very popular. So it's going to be limited amounts of people chatting. All right, we're up against Tau. Uh, that's the thing that we don't want to be up against because the Tau are terrifying. Um, let's go ahead and check this out here. Um, I kind of almost want to take double Dauntless against this, I think, at this point's value. So we're going to go ahead and give that a try. Nice thing about this is that we are using the Space Marines. Uh, Space Marines, I th feel like, are pretty okay against Tau. Um, we're going to try and just ram through into the middle of them, though, and uh, get in between their ships, really deal some damage that way. I think that's the best way to defeat Tau, uh, especially, like given how overpowered they are right now in some senses. Water cast is probably too good uh, in just in just so many respects, but not just that. They tend to take a lot of carriers with that, so... Alright. I guess they can't take too many. I think you can only take, like, one Protector Tulku right now. Okay. But yeah, Small Monster 6... Small Monster 08? Small Monster 08. Uh, there is there is chat, I think. Uh, there should be chat. It's just, uh, no if you want to start up com some conversations with the other people in there, it looks like there's a couple other people watching. Go ahead and uh, awesome. chat away. Yeah, so my opponent here is definitely going for a strategy that has lots Sitting of those uh, little escorts. Probably at this level, he's just got this those basic small ones. He's firing off those recon probes, like, way too early, because I'm just going to move into a gas cloud. Like, by the time those hit here, my guys will probably be just about in the gas cloud. Understood. So... It's not really too useful to do that. It will get him a free torpedo volley, but not really too concerned about that. Um, I think he also fired these guys at a weird angle. No, actually, no, that looks that looks about right. All right, so we're going to set our guys to front firing and close range behavior because we're going to be going in for rams, even with our carrier ship. Because the carrier, like the broadsides on this, aren't fantastic, and it has got lance turrets, two damage per second from lance turrets. It's like broadside damage is pretty okay about six damage per second so it's not it's not terrible it's not great and we should be losing uh, recon vision in just a moment here so hopefully those tor torpedoes aren't too in the right direction but Your orders. Helm uh, peak viewership for one of my streams uh probably like nine people or thereabouts i think yes it's pretty small, like, I'm, I'm really new at this. So, if I had, like, 50 people or something like that, that would be pretty surprising to me, honestly. This is only, like, the second day I've ever done streaming, so. Alright. So now that we've got that all dealt with and finished, let's go ahead and uh, just charge our way in there.
Personally, I mostly just stream for fun. As far as I know, I'm probably never going to get paid for ever doing streams. Like, I, I don't actually know what the criterion for getting paid on streams is, but I probably won't ever get it. Alright, let's just uh, charge in here. So we're going to go ahead and drop that there. At your command. Underway. Yes, Admiral. Targeting enemy vessel. Helm coordinates acknowledged. All right, so we're going to spin around and start attacking this guy here. We're going to spin around and start attacking this guy here. You can see that he's sort of turning his back to me a little bit too often. All right, here comes the those Water cast to little bullshit. Alright, so let's get uh, this ship here rammed. Oh, what the hell was that? Alright, that was really weird. Well, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we'll get some more people noticing, but let's be fair. I'm just doing this for fun, so it doesn't make a huge difference to me if I don't. Alright, let's get some rams in. Oops, oh, this ship's lost its, uh, warps, or its, uh, lance. Alright. So we're gonna need to get, uh, this guy out of the fight. If we can get the Tulku out of the fight, we're gonna be fine. Alright, so we're going to lose this ship here, but that's okay. Alright. He's trying to get away with this ship here. Ah, he got away with that. Alright. He's probably going to get away with this other one as well. But, you know what? That's fine, it's a victory for me, and that's what really matters. I kind of played sloppy on this one, I was trying to look at comments at the same time, which I'm not used to yet. Uh, I'll get better at it as I go on, of course, that's something that you learn. Uh, today I plan on streaming a little bit of um, Civilization VI. Um, in future I'm probably going to also stream a little bit of uh, Total War Warhammer. Um, I don't know for sure, but I really want to play Condemned on Halloween. Because uh, I did have that in my sitting around, and I haven't played that yet, actually, and it's a really good horror game. Um, so I was probably going to do Condemned on Halloween and, and make that an all-day thing. So if uh, you're interested in an old-ass uh, horror game... <laughs> Hi, other person, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, if you're interested in a really old-ass uh, horror game for Halloween, then come check this out. I'll be playing Condemned on that day. Um, it should be interesting. I've never played it before. I'll probably freak out a little bit. Um... Actually, well, I probably won't freak out that much. If you've ever seen me playing um, other games, I've got a YouTube channel. It's uh, you could times on YouTube. Um, I play some horror games there like Amnesia, and I deadpan my way through those games. And it takes a lot of force of will to actually not be jumpy or skittish about that. But, um, yeah, I, when I play horror games, I tried to completely dead deadpan. Uh, I think I've got a saved playthrough uh, from the stream that I did last time for uh, Civilization, but it's so bad because like it was my very first day of getting it. I, I did a release day stream of Civil Civilization, so I'll probably uh, start a new game. Uh, I've, I'm a little bit better now. Over the week, I actually managed to beat a game. Um, I've actually beaten on DD difficulty, so I know the mechanics a little bit better now. Uh, I know what's going on a little bit better, so I'll probably be playing a new playthrough on, on Civilization. I won't be playing on Deity because it's not actually fun on that difficulty. <laughs> um, I'll probably be playing on something like uh, Emperor difficulty. So yeah, come check that out if that's something you're going to be interested in. Um, I'm probably going to take like a half hour break once I've gotten uh, enough games of Battlefleet Gothic in. I'm probably going to do maybe one more battle after this one because I just got one queued here. but. Uh, one more after this, we'll take probably an hour, half hour break, and then I'll come back and play some Civilization. And uh, subscribe to me on Twitter. Uh, that's where I tell people when my streams are going to come out. Uh, I'll break through. That's, uh, that's a bitch. But...
Ooh, it's the same guy. Okay, so he's probably not none too happy about this situation either. Um, right. This is the crappest points value. Uh, all right, there we go. And like a Widowmaker, I guess. You created an account for this. Thank you so much. I would actually recommend, like, having... You, you don't actually need an account to watch streams, but, like, yeah, if you want to get into chat and start talking to people, it's a great sort of feature for that. But, uh, yeah, I've actually been a long-time stream viewer, and I just never log in to... I, I actually don't log into Twitch because I, I don't usually have a lot to say in comments, but, yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun thing to just sort of be part of the community, talk to other people who are interested in the same sort of things. Uh, all right, so... The one problem with this is, like, it's hard for me to afford my carrier in this sort of situation. So I've got the Dominator, which is probably a mistake. I probably should have taken the carrier anyway, but we'll find out. What I'm probably going to have to do, because Tau out ordinance me, is to actually just um, run forward with my ships and try and engage him and actually destroy his ships. And uh, hopefully that'll work. I'm, I'm hoping that works. Shouldn't be too hard for me to get vision of his stuff either, so there is that. Actually, we're going to deploy right behind the cloud, because since we're going to be running up forward, um, he's probably going to try and, like, he'll have a choice. He'll either be able to destroy our ships by getting vision of them and everything like that, uh, or he can try and focus on the actual objective. So he's got those options, basically. All right. Underway. All right, we got... Uh, got Seven. Changing course. Your orders. All right. Hmm. So I'm wondering, like, my opponent's holding his torpedoes. That means he obviously intends to just attack my ships here. He doesn't really intend to go after my defense platforms. Enemy ship sighted. What the hell? Oh, he's got the stealth thing. He's got the stealth ally and a couple ships there. So, not really my favorite thing to have to deal with, but whatever. Front firing, 3,000. Do I not have uh, I don't. Okay. So one of the things you can do in this game if your ships are getting focus fired down, and this ship, for example, is getting focus fired down, is actually just move a ship sort of in front of it. And just uh, kind of move like that. Not that it really matters for ships that are this del delicate and fragile, but... Ramming is the best way to defeat um, light escort ships in this game, so... There we go. Changing course. We lost the defense platform. Yeah, here he comes, trying to actually focus the objective now. We're going to swing our ships around and uh, try and deal with that now. Is it going to be easy? I don't think so. It's very easy for Tau to destroy defense platforms, so... But we still have to do what we did, so I'm not too too banged up about it. Your orders. We could just suicide this guy into uh, into those guys. I'm gonna hit the prepare now, just in case. The reason we're hitting repair now, of course, is that uh, I kind of don't want him to get to the point where he I, I can't repair. So that does happen to these things. Right, so if we move over here, we can sort of get into a position where we can defend from these uh, torpedoes. Against these torpedoes with uh, just standing in front of them, basically. And tanking them. Probably going to lose this one, though. Um, it's just really easy for Tau to get their ships out, out uh, in this situation. Oh, wow, we disabled the engines in one of them. Alright. So body blocking is, of course, not the ideal thing to do with your ships, but it works, so. It also adds a little bit to the turret value of the area, so 
Oh, there's those are gonna get through, I think. Alright, so we were in a good position, I think, to body block those. Um, but I don't think we can actually stop them in time. They'll probably get a little bit of damage through somehow, and then uh, we'll basically be done. Now, I also don't have the ability to tank through these uh, asteroid fields very effectively. Oh, crap. Oh, God. Uh, Alright, well... It's nice that he actually managed to damage himself there quite a bit. Alright. Yeah, he's gonna get out with these guys. That was well played by my opponent there. He's not gonna be able to get out with both of them, but he only has to get out with one, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, Line Ship Escapes is, is just one, so... Did get the shields off, uh... Did get a bunch of successful boarding actions on this guy, though. So it's pretty nice to be able to deal some damage, at least. Alright, so we can try to run up here with the, this Dauntless here. And try and get some damage on it, but... Realistically, uh, we're not going to be able to win this one. Yeah, he had his eye on the prize, he had his eyes on the objective. He knew what he was doing. And this is one of those uh, really sort of unfair kind of uh, s scenarios or objectives or whatever. What I could have done probably is gotten my ships back uh, to deal with, like, one of them to deal with the escorts, even though it's not necessarily a great idea to do that, because, uh, like, four escorts can actually destroy a line ship. Um, but if he, if I had done that, I potentially could have stopped those other ones from destroying my platforms, but it's really hard to stop the Tau from destroying your platforms. It really is. Just those uh, homing torpedoes. Uh, the space station, on the other hand, is like really hard for the Tau to destroy, or destroy just because the ordnance is going to get cancelled by the uh, ordnance from this platform. So, yeah, it, it's kind of however you want to take it. I could have gotten more renown, actually, if I just uh, focused destroying on uh, destroying that one ship that had the crippled engines. Or if I had been more up on it, I could have body blocked that last torpedo and then we would have been fine, but... All right, we're up to seven viewers. That's actually not that bad for me, uh, um, in all honesty. So hello to all of my viewers here. Hope you're enjoying uh, what's going on here. I've got to get some upgrades for these guys, and we're probably going to go ahead and give our Dauntlesses something like the uh, Voss Pattern Void Shields as the next uh, upgrade. With the uh, Actually, no, we'll take the, the additional uh, Auxiliary Shield Capacitors. So it's pretty pretty good stuff there. Master Gunners. Dauntlesses are not really my favorite ship. They're kind of weak. Um, but they're really good for certain things like running running down faster ships that are kind of kind of also weak. It's just the damage per second on these guys is pretty low, so you're not going to be able to kill a lot of things that you would want to. So they, they sort of run into some problems there. So we're going to probably play just like uh, maybe one more. I'm going to take about... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a half hour break. I'm going to get a little bit to eat. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, start up some Civilization VI. So put out another announcement on Twitter that uh, we're going to be starting that in half an hour. And then we'll uh, see how that goes. Of course, as well, if you're uh, new to the stream here, there, there is another Battlefleet Gothic uh, stream that is posted in the videos. If you want to look at that for a little while while you're waiting, if you uh, really feel like you want to watch some more stuff. Go ahead and uh, watch that. I play as uh, Chaos in that one. It's actually not that bad a performance. I did it relatively okay. Um, it's using a really cheesy strategy, though. I don't know how much people are going to really appreciate that, ultimately. Because uh, I do some cheap stuff there. All right, a 600-point uh, Cruiser Clash. 660-point Cruiser Clash. Uh, now, I'm actually in trouble here. The reason that I'm in trouble is because I've got a very Dominator-heavy fleet. I don't have my armor piercing macros yet, and we're up against orcs. And orcs have got huge hit point pools that uh, you don't deal damage to with uh, with your Nova Cannons. So I'm not really going to be able to do much damage with those sort of things here. So I'm going to have to rely on something else. Um, we'll go ahead and take one Mars, just in case he's got lots of uh, carrier capacity. Uh, if we had upgrades on our Dominators, this could go pretty smoothly. But... 
as it is, we're probably going to run into a situation where my opponent there is just going to absolutely demolish me. This is one of the this is one of those really bad matchups: uh, Dominators and Mars versus uh, Orcs. If I had taken the lighter cruisers, if I had taken the Dauntlesses, the Dauntlesses also get completely owned by Orcs because the damage per second is low and they sort of rely on ramming, which is not a great way to play against Orcs. Uh, like Orcs will take a lot of damage from ramming, but they don't care as much because they've got a lot of damage to take. Um, we'll go ahead and put this guy down here. So that's how uh, we got good coverage to help our Dominators tank through the gigantic waves of torpedoes that we're probably going to be running into. So, once I get the Retribution, um, this sort of flips around a little bit. Once I get the Armor-Piercing Macros, this flips around a little bit. A lot of things can be done to make this a better matchup for me. It's just, it requires levels. Alright. And we're probably going to go with... Um, regular bombers against orcs. I find that they work out quite well. My opponent actually only has four ships. That actually is kind of terrifying. Um, so he's probably got his uh, his really big ships, oh, just all four of them, um, and looks like he's also willing to just hang back and fire torpedoes, so... Uh, yeah, I'm not very well situated for dealing with that kind of torpedo spam. The nice thing is, if he's using boarding torpedoes, we're a little bit more resilient to it because we have gotten Adeptus Astartes. Uh, it does make it so that we're less likely to uh, take damage from those boarding torpedoes. I don't particularly like the style of play that some people do. This one where they sort of hang back in the corner. Actually, only some of these are uh, boarding torpedoes. Looks like some of them are normal. But that's fine. I don't like the style of play that some people do where they just hang way, way back with uh, just lots of torpedoes. Because it's boring, it really is. Um, it's not even necessarily too effective. Like, you'll deal a little bit of damage to it, so in some sense you might as well. Uh, it's probably better than not doing anything, I guess. But, like, this wave got, looks like, a torpedo hit. I'm not really that impressed by that. Oh no, he's starting to advance towards me. Okay, so... It's actually not that big a scumbag. All right, all our ships have been identified somewhat. I don't really care um, up against orcs. It's not a huge deal against them. Uh, they will have zap cannons and stuff like that, but uh, we're not going to be too worried about that. They've also got that apparently, but shock attacks failed, so oh, they got something there. Hull breach and a fire. All right, shock attack success again. Probably should have waited actually for this torpedo wave, but whatever. Oh wow, that is the worst. That is so bad. <laughs> the scatter on that was hilarious. All right, well, whatever. But yeah, like you can see that these torpedoes have had like some impact, but it's pretty minimal, honestly. Alright. And him launching that, of course, doesn't matter at all because we've got uh, ourselves in a situation where we're just slowly advancing our way forward here and he can already see us, so. There we go. Your orders? All right, let's see where my other bombs are. So I have got a bunch of different bombs here. I dropped that one late. All right, this ship is getting completely wrecked up here. So this ship is pretty much out of the fight, but we'll get it sort of turned around and have it fire at them from a distance. I'm probably going to lose this one. I don't really know why he's uh, 
I'm gonna let this guy warp out, actually. Oh, that's why he was doing it. Okay, I see. Oh wow, he got that. I'm surprised. I will go ahead and execute that one. Um. Oh yeah, no, we're getting wrecked here. This is the thing, like higher level fleets usually are able to wreck lower level fleets. It's kind of just the way of things. You can, to a certain extent, uh, mitigate that against some fleets, but there comes a certain point where it's just too hard to actually tear through the opponent fleet when they've got those upgrades. It's one of the reasons why I kind of prefer ranked. But yeah, we're gonna get wrecked here. Uh. Alright. Wow, we just got through the belt armor of that guy. We're getting soaked. We're soaking crits here. In a real bad way compared to our opponent here. Alright, let's just uh, suicide into this thing. See if we can cause it to cripple. No, not quite. That's close, though. That explosion from that last bit there. Pretty close to a cripple there. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't getting out of that one out on C8 because they're just too high a level compared to me. I can tell that those are fully upgraded ships as well. It's really rough when you're dealing with that, but it makes a good challenge, I think. The terrain is also pretty badly uh, in their favor just because the, those uh, flanking uh, flanking uh, asteroid belts made it so I sort of had to channel through there, making it easier for them to torpedo me a lot. But again, the torpedoes didn't actually deal that much damage as I was approaching, probably about 400 damage in total. Uh, which isn't really that much spread across all those different ships. I would have lost even if I hadn't taken that. So that's why I just don't worry about torpedoes. But you can't you can't go through that much of uh, the orcs' hit points when you're using these kinds of ships until you get the armor-piercing macros. Also, of course, like the fully upgraded shields helps a lot. Um, they come up a lot faster than the orc ones, but even then, um, those ships are just durable as hell. All right, so. This is also why you don't care. Like, don't try and warp out with your ships in this game necessarily. It's okay to try and warp out with one maybe once or twice, but uh, it's you get so much renown in this game that you don't really need to warp out with your ships. You can repair them, and it's pretty much free um, at this point. They've really upped the renown gain for these games. So that's just the way that sort of is. So anyway, um, that's going to be the stream for now. We're going to take a half-hour break. Uh, I'm going to shut the stream down while, while we're waiting, so uh, do, do make sure to come back in about half an hour. And hopefully you'll enjoy that one as well as this one. So anyway, uh, yeah, hope you all had fun. And of course, as always, hope to see you all next time.